Oops, I did it again, sang the pop superstar Britney Spears back in the early 2000s. And she was, of course, referring to her crippling addiction to buying knackered old cars off Facebook Marketplace and eBay. And I totally feel her pain. This is a Tasty Classics Left for Dead Rusty Voxel Special. So I got this thing from a couple of lovely guys called Ian and Gareth. Now, this car had been with them, believe it or not, since it was first made back in 1980, when it was brand spanking new. I'd have loved to have seen it then, you know. Um, they've got a garage a couple of hours away from me. They do sort of classic car repairs and restoration, and they do um, normal servicing and stuff as well. And it's a great little garage, and they've got a little yard out the back with some cars in it. And the story behind this one is, I think it was their old man's. He bought the car brand new. It was the only car he'd ever bought brand new, and he just loved it, and he cherished it, and he drove it. Did around 100,000 miles in the thing, and then parked it up apparently in early 2000s, 2001 I think it was parked up and that's where it's sat ever since. Now unfortunately due to it being sat for what's sat 22 years the tin worm has you know in it's 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 invited itself in you know and um, yeah well they decided to stick it on eBay as a parts car and I thought well let me just have a little go first, see if I can get the thing running and driving and all that sort of stuff. But I'll be honest, it, it, knowing what I know, it potentially might just be a parts car, this one, because I think it's rusty in the wrong places, if you know what I mean. So uh, yeah, let's get stuck in, see what we've got here and see if we can breathe some life back into it, you know? Look at what time has done to this car. Look at the paintwork. Look at this blue here. Yeah, this blue is what it should be all over. You can see on the back there, it's supposed to be like that all over. Look what time's done to it. It's probably sun bleached it. The patina's pretty cool in places. A few holes though. But it's all there, isn't it, you know? Apart from maybe that bit of trim, but we might find that in the car. I'm absolutely loving these wheels as well. I don't know what... Oh, I've just noticed there's only... There's only two nuts on that one. That's, that's cool, that's okay. You only need two anyway. Probably only need one. But they're really smart, aren't they, with like the, the chrome ring around the edge. Look at how good it is. Really smart. Chrome rings are dead cool. But yeah, what are the other side like? Are they good? Oh, it's missing one. Oh no, that front one's got it there. But it's missing a chrome ring. I wonder if it'll be in the car somewhere. Nice little voxel badges. Look at this thing hanging off here. Whoops. Could almost get a tune out of that if I learned how to play it properly. Fuel caps sort of open there. Okay, awesome. Look at this. That is on there. Oh yeah, that is on there. That is grimy. You know, look at this bit of rust there, that's, you know, it's not, so I'm struggling to see any massive holes immediately. Look at these doors, like, a bit of rust on the bottom of the doors, yeah, it's okay, it's alright. It's got air in all the tyres, and I know that because I put the air there myself, 
earlier on to get it off the trailer. Look at that Vauxhall badge, iconic. I absolutely love it. Right, so this is the first real sign of the of the rot that it's got. That's pretty bad. But yeah, whatever. Can also see I can almost see the engine through the front of the bonnet there, so that's not good either. Look at that. How cool is that? I love it. You only get that once. You can't you can't fake that. You can't fake this this look. I mean look at the boot. <laughs> you can't fake this lock that's missing. Okay. Oh god. We've got a slush box. That could be a problem. These lights though, they're quite smart, aren't they? Really good. So it's a 2000 GL. The GL of course standing for good luck. Um, <clears throat> so it would appear that this is the fast one. Not only is it the fast one, but it's quite a good spec as well by the looks of it, you know. They did these in, I think, 1600, 1800 and, and 2 litre and the 2 litre being the top of the range. Now I think these came out in about 1975 these cars and it was, well it was a real good thing for Vauxhall. It kind of brought them into a whole new sort of sector in terms of fleet buyers and things. So you had this which led into the Mark 2, so this is a Mark 1 it then went to the Mark II Cavalier, which was, again, a really successful car. This was super successful as well. But then you went into the Mark III Cavalier, and that was a proper successful car. You know, they uh, they did really well with the old Mark III's. And I love them, I think they're great. General Motors owned them at this point, an American firm, you know, and they... Uh, they took a lot of stuff from them. And one thing that GM does really well is that they make a very solid, well put together car. You know, in terms of like, you compare this to some of the British stuff at the time and French and things like that. And this is definitely a much more like, here's an example. And I know this because I've done this earlier. This is a heavy door. Look at this now. How well did that shut then, you know? I've, you know, it's credit where credit's due. That's proper. So what's this mirror saying? Does that want to fold out? Practically like brand new. What about this wiper here? It wipes the scuttle panel as well as the window. That's cool. Oh no, there you go, I fixed that. It's good, halfway there. I'm really impressed at all the sort of bumpers and things as well. They're all really good nick and they're there, you know. What about this mirror? Is that, is that gonna, yeah, okay. Oh, again, look at that. Practically brand new, this thing. Oh wow, look at this little city. Oops. I think of all the life forms on there I've just displaced. Look at this rear bumper as well again, not bad, not bad. All the light clusters and everything are good. I really love the styling of these cars. I think the styling's really cool and what I do like about them as well is that the front engine and rear wheel drive, which is the only real way to, to make a car. And these headlights at the front, the sort of, uh, you know, the, the, the drop, what do they call it? Drop snout, drop snoot or something? I don't know what they call it, but I think it looks pretty cool. I like it. And if you're from one of our neighboring European countries, you'll probably recognize quite a lot of the Opel Ascona um, and Opel Manta in these things. Now, this car here, they did in a, quite a differing range. You had the four door saloon, what looks like this. You had a three door and you had a two door. And yeah, I think we can agree, all pretty good looking cars, you know. 
So, right, let's get stuck into the inside of it. Let's see if we can get into that boot first, you know, see what's potentially in there. Um, lift. One of my very first cars, a worryingly long time ago, was a Vauxhall Astra and you could open the doors, start the car, do anything you wanted pretty much with a flathead screwdriver. Uh, can, we pop that, can we use it to pop the boot open as well, I wonder? Initial impressions are that the boot's really big and I can see the floor over there through the, through, through the door. We've got the chrome ring, we've got the fourth ring. Do you want to have a look? Look at how precarious that looks. Yeah, dead spiders. We're coming into the season now as well. I wonder if we're going to find any live spiders. What's this? It's gone. So yeah, we have our chrome ring, which is fantastic. That's a, that's a full set. I'm not sure what this thing is. Should we just get rid of that for a second? I think that's the back trim panel that goes around there and covers up the fantastic condition and very easily accessible fuel tank. I mean, what a dream that is. Look at how good nick that is. See the fuel sender and everything there looks in top condition. I bet, well, I hope that's going to be all right inside. We'll soon find out, like, but still, that's pretty cool fuel pipes up there. Nice, 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 nice. Right, what about old Quint and Hazel pipe? Some, oops, oh dear. I don't know what that was, but, well, it's pretty dead now. Look at all this, there's a lot of newspaper in it. <laughs> what's, what's, what's this collage? Look at this, can we find a date? Friday, November 23rd, 1990. Oh, 10% off. That's cool. I wonder if that's still valid. Right, back in here. Now let's have a look. So that's a hole, yeah. But this panel here, you know, that's not too shabby at all, is it? It's all together. About the spare wheel. Oh. So that's pretty special. This is like a, a must rot space for voxels. They always go around this ring here, but this one, look at that. It hasn't done a bit there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a little bit there. But yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay. Can we uh, get any closer to the boot floor? I wonder if this is, you can take this up. No, can't take that up. But I think that's potentially saved it because it does look, yeah, it does look really solid. Nice. But no car parts other than that heater hose. So I don't know. Let's go around this. But look at that fuel tank though. How good. How good. How well did that door open? So again, this is an absolute must rot area for voxels. And well, it hasn't, has it? So that's really good to see. Got sun bleaching and stuff going on there. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Again, the door's not too bad. I've MOT'd worse. Look at these seats very plush. Let's go around the back there. That looks like it wants replacing that blue mat. Looks pretty rough. Back of these seats wants a good clean. Look at the carpet. What's all this glass? Why is there so much glass in there? All the windows are intact. What's all that about? 
Interesting, okay, maybe this is where they stored all the broken glass. Who knows? But yeah, that looks like it'll clean up a tree in there, doesn't it? Okay, ow. Okay, look how clean that is. I thought you said this thing was rusty. Wow, bottom of the door's gone. Look at that, that's, that's crusty. And again, look at all this glass. Yeah, needs a, needs a little hoover. Does this window work, I wonder? Oh, yes, look at that, let's just... Um, okay. <coughs> Maybe we'll leave, that's how it... <sighs> right, okay. Um, what, what's in here? So, first thing to note is we have a Cavalier repair manual. Yeah, 1.6, sorry, 1.9, not 1.8, 1.6, 1.9, and a two liter, you know, the fast one. But look at this, this is gonna be so handy. Tightening torques, don't need to worry about those, do we? It's got everything you could ever need in here. This is gonna be very handy, I feel. We'll, keep, we'll leave that there. What about this? We've got tunes. It's just not connected, but that is really original. <laughs> really original Ford stereo. Oh well, it's got a Ford badge on it. Might be like 500 quid on eBay, that. Um, Vauxhall centre badges. Add those to the Vauxhall centre badge collection. An auto lock. And the buttons for the stereo, definitely worth a million quid now. Door handles, yeah, okay. Lots of lovely door handles, we don't mind if we've got those. And oh, some rope, which I'll be swinging from later on once I've seen what this car looks like underneath. Great. Again, the front seats, well, they're a bit they're a bit sort of crusty and oh, it just it just wipes off. <laughs> Fine. No massive hot oh, eyes. A couple of little holes on that one over there, but you know the pre carpet's good. You know, could could buff up. Oh, look at the clock. Look at this dashboard as well. That is quite a cool retro dashboard. That isn't it? I really like it. I like that a lot. What have we got in there? Nothing. What's that? Looks like a <laughs> engine um, core plug. Cool. But yeah, that's all right. What's the headlining like? Oh, a couple of big holes in the headlining. Sun visors, yeah, they're there. Nice, nice, nice. Love that clock though. Sig light is still there. Oh. Fuse panel lid. That's probably going to come in handy for something. Slush box. In neutral, that's handy. I don't want to try and move that just yet. All right, let's have a look at the driver's side. So this door again. A little bit of rust starting there. Top of it's gone quite badly there. Yeah, it's all right though, isn't it? Look at this, yeah. Chair looks suitable in, doesn't look like it's going to kill me too much. Everything else is, you know, it's all pretty solid there. Nice GM floor mat. Look at that steering wheel. I like this car. Oh, there's a key. Oh, we've got a key. Look at this instrument panel. Can you see that? What are we on? 99,461, but I love the layout of it. Voxel are cool, man. They did some cool stuff. Do you the Astra GT that had like a digital dash? You know, they were an innovative company. They were. Right. Shall we see if we can get under the hood? 
the sun's definitely starting to peek through now. This is this is lovely. What a lovely day. Uh, okay, that was easy. Okay, okay. Be brave. That's some rust. That is some rust. Well, I think we found where the rust is anyway. Has it got a bonnet prop? Will it hold it? I doubt it. Oh my God, every time it moves. Maybe he needs a new bonnet. Sure, they're dead easy to find. Um, yeah, there's a few holes, you know. Oh, there is a few holes. What seems to have happened is the rust has sort of centralised itself in this area. Would you like to see? I mean, that is fairly chronic, isn't it? Look at that. Great stuff. We're missing that, but I did think ahead and ordered one of those just in case we need to, just in case we even get this thing running. But I mean, if you look at it, I don't fancy my chances, to be honest. I reckon that is seized solid. Look at how rusty it is, man. Might have to give this a hoover before we start, just to hoover all the rust bits off there everywhere, man. Look at that. Crikey, crikey. So, no HT leads, spark plugs are in, start motor again, I bet that's locked solid as well, look at that. Now I can see a little bit of rust down there, can see a rust hole down there. Where does the battery live on these things? Is that the battery tray there? Yeah, there you go, look, there's the earth. That looks really good condition. I'll tell you what, I've seen worse battery trays on really new Ford Focuses. That's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. Now, uh, don't know if you can see, I'm just going to lower the camera down. I hope you can see there, but can you see that chassis leg? Yeah, it's pretty gone. Don't know if you can see that there. We'll try and get a better look at that at some point, but that is pretty gone. And I can't see what it's like down there, but again, we'll have a better inspection later on. Brakes, is that fluid? Yeah, okay, some fluid. Look at that, God, it's all very crusty, isn't it? Look at this thing. Wow. Oh, there's some, some washer fluid left in it. Dipstick. Uh, uh, <laughs> Dipsticks. Dip it's probably going to snap it off and try and pull this out. Oh no. Oh, hello. Hello. Look at that. Lots of oil on one side, not so much on the other. That's a bit weird, isn't it? We'll use this free rag here to clean that. Okay, I mean, that, that, that went better than expected. I didn't want to go back in though. Okay, what's this? Oh, dipstick with a slush box. Oh, look at that. That is cool. Red blood from the slush box. Nothing worse than an old Vauxhall automatic gearbox, is there? What's lurking underneath this thing? Just dropped a bit of rust in there then, but again, you know, it doesn't look too bad in there, but it has got a little cover over it, so I can't really tell. Uh, what about the air cleaner? Oh, I'll have to use it. Ah, forget it. We'll do, we'll do that in a minute. I, um, I really want to know if this thing is going to be turned over 
So the first thing we can do is start sticking some stuff down the spark plugs. There's a fan here, so what happens if I try and do it by hand? Just keep my eye on the bottom pulley. Oh my God. I'm sure that moved then, that did turn over. Oh. That's turning over. That is turning over, look, look. Just keep, keep your eye on that pulley down there. That is moving, okay. Belt seems to be quite stuck on all of this stuff, but, oh. Oh, oh fantastic, okay. That's just given me a pretty huge confidence boost. That engine does turn over. Well, it goes around a little bit. I don't know if it goes all the way, but it moves. Exciting. Uh, right, what should we do now? I think we should take this big thing off here and have a little look at what's lurking underneath it, you know? I'm concerned that something's gonna go through or snap and this bonnet's gonna fall on my head, but wouldn't be the first time that's happened, might knock some sense into me. That came off really easily, didn't it? I'm trying not to drop any rust into there. Oh, oh, oh look how clean that is! Now that is impressive, that is really clean and almost oily and it, oh, it's free. What's that Akdelco thing there? Why does this just want to lift off though? Should be held on by more than that you'd have thought. Just breathe the pipe on the back. Will that just pull off? Yeah, there you go. Loads of vacuum lines. It's the thing with General Motors as well is that they are the kings of vacuum lines. I remember doing a Pontiac a couple of years ago. Here's a little picture of me riding the engine of it. And it was just like vacuum line city. Like vacuum did everything. And then there was the Amiga as well, which, you know, again, vacuum line city. So that's in pretty good nick, isn't it? Really, Cons all things considered. Well, that looks like a throttle cable or a choke or something there. And it's free. That's a good start, isn't it? So was it a automatic choke or something? I don't know. Well, oh, must be. God, look at all this stuff down there. It's great, isn't it? Where's the fuel? Where's the fuel? Is that the fuel? Looks like it. Oh! Oh, rust falling on me. Where does that fuel pipe go? Down there, down there, it just disappears. Okay, awesome. Electric fuel pump, probably. Sensible thing here now is to just go and grab the hoover and just try and get rid of as much as we can of all this sort of flaking rust. Because I don't want to take anything off. I don't want this rust falling down there, you know, so I'll just try and give it a bit of a... <whistles> See if that helps. Would you say you're hoovering the underside of your bonnet enough? I'm not sure I am. Now I have come semi-prepared this time. I've even, got, I've even got an oil filter. What was I, what was I hoping for? Um, I'll just pop that there. Spark plugs and a radiator cap. 
and a brand new battery. Have I won the pools or something? And I've got some HT leads off the pickup truck somewhere. I'll go and grab them. Yeah, these were the old leads off the truck, so hopefully they'll work. So at this juncture, the only real sane thing to do here is to just hook up this battery and, um, well, firstly, see if it sets on fire. And then secondly, we'll see if she spins over. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Um, right. Uh, again, very solid up there. Shame about all the underneath, isn't it? Okay, so that if that earth does anything, I'll be impressed. But there it goes, it's on. We've got a posi cable, look at that, there we have, we have. Okay, stand by. Just install that correctly. Nothing's happening. Should we go and see if we've got any lights? Right then, oh, let's see if the gods are smiling down on us today. Oh, hello, ignition lights. Oh, right, we're in neutral. Dare I just spin the key? We've got oil. <laughs> Nothing happens. But I've noticed when I do twist the key, the battery light and the oil light dim right down. So we're possibly looking for some sort of earth issue or something like that, you know, or the start motor being locked solid. Just switch those off. Well, actually, let's switch them back on. Let's, should we have a quick game of what works and what doesn't? I'll do the buttons. You tell me if anything comes off. Hazards. Might have a bulb out, but we've got, you know, something's happening. A headlight, a headlight. Oh, one there, very bad, very dim. Okay. One, one eye open at least, but not really anything else to check inside here. So yeah, I've just tried the uh, knocking it into park and doing the key just to see if anything happened there, but nothing happened. So let's see if we can short the start motor out and see if we can get that to spin over. Right then, let's use this starting stick and we'll see if we can get it to spin over. hear it fizzing in there didn't like that that start motor is pretty uh, sad by the feel of it I just <laughs> I just saw this spark plug like jump like move so it's loose in the head it doesn't look in that bad neck either Let's just pop that back in loosely there for the moment that was weird, must have been on like the compression stroke then. That one's loose as well. Interesting, that start motor feels pretty, uh, pretty sad. Oh, 
Oh, I can hear the, 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 it going through the compression strokes. It really doesn't want to turn over quickly though, so what I'm going to do, um, well, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the multimeter on a couple of bits and I'm just going to check that we've got power into a couple of areas. I've got 12 volts at the coil, that's cool. What's this look like underneath here? Very corroded. Seen worse though. Uh, <laughs> we've got a spark. Do you want to see? Can you see that there? That's great news. So what that means is, if we connect leads and stuff up, clean this dizzy cap up. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Spot the, spot the problem guys. We could have just been stopped in our tracks. There's a, there should be, a, <laughs> there should be a little thing on there. What spins round? Oh no. We are missing the rotor arm. I wonder if Jim Barrows have a rotor arm for this. I bloody doubt it. Oh no, what a pain. Right, okay. I'm going to have to make a couple of phone calls. That is a problem. Definitely should have checked that, shouldn't I? I don't like sort of delving into these things before I actually do anything though. I'd rather do it live, do you know what I mean? What if there's any... I wonder if it's round here anywhere. What's that there? No. I wonder if it's just fallen off and it's... What is it lying around? Oh dear. Oh dear. Right, okay. On the phone. They're genuinely incredible. Like, I don't... Listen, I don't get paid by Jim Barrow or anything to, to promote them, but... They just come up with the goods. They, they haven't got a rotor arm in stock now for this 1980 Cavalier shock, but they can get me one for like quarter to four today. What a group of guys. So um, I'm going to take a trip down later on in the Tasty Trucks, go and grab that. But for now, I'm going to do a few other bits. We're going to try and attach some HT leads. We're going to pour some oil down the spark plug holes, some plus gas, just to see if we can free everything up because it does sound a little bit tight and a few other areas. Um, we could even potentially do some more um, bits on the car. I don't know, whatever, we can have a look through it. Um, I've got a few hours to kill. Okay, well, we don't need the spanner thing for that one. We do for this one though. Oh, lovely and loose, that very nice. I wonder why they're so loose though. God, I don't look in the bad nick at all. I might keep these. I'll send those new ones back. Okay, and it looks as well, you can tell by that spark plug there that when it was running, it was running really well. You know, I don't know how long they were in there, but that does look like a very good spark plug. It's exactly how you want them to look, you know. This tyre beneath me here has gone flat already. Not ideal. So again, not putting tons in there, that's just a little bit of lubrication in case there's not enough in there already, you know. It'll help things a little bit. Spinning around loads better now, with, and I can feel, I can feel the compression out of each cylinder so much. Listen to this. Using a lot of the battery there. Um, 
but that's incredible stuff that just spun over dead nicely without the spark plugs in so I'm I'm really happy with that. Is ignition still on? No ignition's off. Cool. Right. Yeah close enough. Water pump doesn't sound very clever, does it? Really doesn't like spinning over with all the compression there but I think the battery is a bit crap it was the absolute cheapest one I could buy so I think the start might come around a bit when we stick like 40 volts up it with the big Bertha machine so uh yeah cool right let's try and work out this uh HT wire arrangement where do these electricity pipes live uh, oh my god, look at that, it's made, can you see there? This, look at this one, it's like made to measure man. Okay, right, let's consult the book of words. Handy little picture of the rotor around there, so I know it's right when I go and pick it up later. Or it could be that one there, so. No help at all, was it really? So I'm just shining up the uh, distributor cap. I've just been having a look in the manual. Just at a couple of things like firing order, which is normal, 1342. Um, but I've also found out that it's got a mechanical fuel pump just down there underneath the alternator, which is really good news, isn't it? So, you know, I wonder if it might even just be a case of chucking some fuel in the fuel tank. I'd be very surprised. But we can crack that off there and we can catch what's coming out and maybe see, you know. But yeah, pretty cool, eh? Such a nice day here today. I feel very um, zen. Yeah? Quite a bit of zen going on. Good opportunity to say a big thank you to the new subscribers if you haven't subscribed and you're enjoying this or simply if there's just nothing else on then um you know drop me a little subscribe have a little comment let me know what you think um i'd appreciate it if you want to buy some hats and stuff as well hoodie um some stickers Stickers are cool, they're new. Um, they're in, link in the description, you know. Yeah, it's better. I'm back from Jim Barrows, and if you could bottle up what a round two hour trip to Chester does to you in that and sell it, you'd be a millionaire. Just such a such a rewarding drive, you know. Anyway, we've got a rotor arm. Look at this tire as well. It's just flat. But yeah, we've got a rotor arm and that's pointing up there now because I've just done... This is all a little bit guesswork because I haven't got the data sheet for this but I think this is pretty much how it wants to work. Uh, so I've just spun it round and I've got top of compression on there, which I just tested with my thumb. And the rotor arm's pointing to there. So you'd assume that, that there is number one. So it'd be one and it goes around that way. And then that's number two, so that'll go to three, four, two. Yeah, so I'm gonna do that now and then we'll see, we'll check for some sparks. Um. So that one's too long, so we'll do, so one goes to one, one, three. OK, 
Okay, now I'm going to pop the ignition on, spin her over and check for spark. It's no good metal in there to check. I think I did see a spark in there, but that's when it really slowed. That start mode is dead. I'm um, not sure what I can do about that, to be honest. Apart from sort of putting another one in. Um, I don't know if that's going to be fast enough to, to start this thing, really. I um, don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Now I couldn't quite tell because the sun's directly on here as well so it's really hard to see if I've actually got a spark as well so I'm potentially, can I find a bit of metal down here? Everything's awfully rusty. We did get a spark, so I can pop that back in there. And we're going to try and... What's that? I can see new moisture coming from there. That's interesting. I might disconnect the uh, fuel line before we try and start. I just can't imagine this is going to... Well, colour me surprised. That is the magic of plus gas, I think, isn't it? I'm just doing this because I saw some wetness coming out of here and that wasn't me. I've not sprayed anything on that, so it's probably trying to pump something through the tank. And what I'm worried about is it's trying to pump in, I don't know, water or something like that, whatever's in the tank, you know old fuel that's not going to help it run so we want to stop it doing that and see what's coming through there you know remember this thing hasn't run in 22 years so it's probably still got whatever was in the tank 22 years ago so i can't imagine it's well i can't imagine it's any good okay so we'll keep an eye on this pipe here and we'll see if anything pumps out of it, you know. This thing really does not want to, does not want to play ball. Come on. Come on, once it on the block, come on. Whoa. I mean, you can see the smoke here from, from the starter motor there, but it's it's getting a little bit... It's 
to get a little bit excited. If it does set on fire, I've got the hose there, so, you know, it's all right, isn't it? It's working on the key. Started to work on the key, maybe because I've cleaned that contact up so much just by scraping it with a screwdriver. Um, it started to turn on the key. That is exciting. Okay. Come on, come to life. So the start mode is uh, giving me grief. What I'm going to do first, before I do anything else, is I'm just going to go around and I'm going to check all the earths to the engine like that one was pretty bad. So I just want to go over them and just make sure that we are earthed properly and then we'll possibly have to take the start mode well. Alrighty then, so I've managed to swap this earth strap with one that I had in stores, which is pretty cool, pretty handy. Um, where did I put the old one? Did I put it over here? Yeah, so that was the old one, as you can see. Pretty toast, you know, not a lot going on. So we'll keep that one as a spare. Right, now this other earth strap. So that earth strap there, that's connecting the body to the battery, right? Start motor's on the engine. So you've got to make sure the earth strap that goes from the engine to the body is good as well, because it's attached via big rubber blocks, so it needs ground into the body. Now, thankfully for us, it's just there, but I thought, well, it looks in pretty good condition, you know, it looks all right, doesn't look like it's going to cause any problems. And then I just moved it at the top and it's loose at the top. I don't know why that is, I can't quite get to it, but what I'm going to try and do is put a socket on that underneath there and tighten it up. Very annoying, but that earth strap there is just spinning, so it's, uh, yeah, whatever it was attached to has rusted away. So we can't use that, but what I've done is I've put this jumper cable onto the engine there and the other side onto the battery, and we'll see if that's going to be enough of an earth for it, you know. And I mean, that's... It's on there. It's on there. It's on there. Okay. It's better, but it's still very, very weak. So... That power wire looks really good. It's not getting too hot either. Did you hear that? Did you see it? Did you bear witness to that little boom? That was this car trying to start. Okay. Come on, baby. Have some more petrol. I knew it. I could feel it. I could. I could feel it. Every time the engine went round, I could. I could tell. <laughs> Fantastic! Look at that. 
Come on, drink up, buddy. Oh, that start motor does not want to play ball. It is smoking something awful. Do you want to see? Look at that. Having a good old smoke. You can hear the battery fizzing as well. I've just put this extra jump lead on just to try and deliver a bit more power to the start motor, but we'll give it a second and we'll try again. I'm just going to do what I can now to keep the uh, start motor cool, you know. So because this is an automatic, I can't just hook the truck up to the front of it and just pull it along and bump start it that way because it's an auto. So it's no dice, it's no possible. Has to start off the start motor. Great. Oh, she really does want to go. She does want to go. Okay, I'm going to leave it for five minutes, just let it cool down a touch and uh, you know I don't know if I've flooded it or anything so I'm just going to let it all settle for five minutes and then we'll come back. But it ran, did you see? So while I was out I went and picked up this can of um, super unleaded and I'm going to waste it all now by putting it in this fuel tank that we know nothing about. Because there's nothing coming out of that pipe, so I want to see, you know, I just want to see. God. <sighs> that just came to life in a big way. Gosh, it sounded half decent as well, didn't it? Oh my God, will it run again? <coughs> oh! Why does the start motor sound so good now after it's had a little rest? What's wrong with it? It's decided to come to the party after all that. And now it's just got shy again. Can you believe how well that just ran and started? Good on you. That was really cool. It sounded great. There's, there's nothing coming out of the fuel um, feed, even though I've put that fuel in the tank, so it's probably not sucking it up, whatever. I, I kind of thought that might be the case, and I can't imagine that fuel pump's gonna work but just feeding it off the little bottle. She was going all right. Crazy stuff. I'd love to get her to idle. So 
It just depends on whether we can leave that in there just to drip feed it and that'll be enough for it to idle. Because if it idles, we can move the truck and see if she see if the you know see if the gearbox goes. I'm gonna put some more air back in this tire though, because I think we should do that. And yeah, try it again. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill this thing up with water and I'm going to tighten the alternator down, which might make it harder to turn over. But I think, you know, if we're going to run it, because it is warming up a touch now, we could do with some water flowing around there. And I want to see if the radiator works, to be honest, and the water pump and stuff. That'd be quite interesting, wouldn't it? Uh, so, yeah, let's get to work trying to get this belt back on and chuck some water in there, see what happens. Notice there's no Jubilee clips on there though. <laughs> yeah, okay, I get you, I get you. I'll get some Jubilee clips as well then, shall I? What about the bottom one? Yeah, there's clips on that. Okay. Let's try not to get the distributor cap all wet. Oh yes, lots of lovely chunks there. Checking this radiator is even going to hold water. I very much doubt it. Cooking, 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 cooking. One thing I like about this car is everything's a 13. <laughs> Everything. Oh, I think there was one 10 earlier. Everything else was a 13. Ah, right. There's no knot on the back of that, so I'll just go and have a look in stores. Yeah, it's got some water in there. Will that fit? I don't know, I mean, I've got it off eBay. Oh, 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 yes, very nice. Look, we've got, yeah, take this to the shops. Why wasn't that good? Didn't want to go then now that the alternator um, and the radiator is full of water and all that sort of good stuff. Ah, ah, I think there's a wire falling off. Have I just knocked that off? We're we not getting a spark. Oh no. I could have wait now. But yeah, I saw a wire there. I think I'd knock that wire out, so it's probably not sparking. Oh, silly. Daft. Uh, I'm going to use this tire. I think I'll move the truck just in case it does run. 
we get to idle. I really want to see if it moves. Oh, close. Ah. It did just run then. And the good news about that is that it means the cylinders aren't being flooded full of water, which is handy. We don't want that. That battery's going to explode. So it's now getting on for 7 p.m. And uh, yeah, that might do us for day one. I'm going to let it sort of rest now. Um, you know, it's had a hard, hard day. So uh, yeah, we'll give it a chance to rest. We'll see if there's still water in the radiator tomorrow. Um, and yeah, we'll. Uh, We'll try and get it moving, that'd be nice. That's kind of what I want to do. Um, and that's it really, I don't really want to do a lot else to this. I'd like to maybe, you know, if we can, get it on the ramp and we'll see what it's like underneath. Um, but that's probably going to be it. So uh, yeah, I'll see you in about three seconds. It's day two and I've just got back from the shops. Been to Demon Tweaks, got myself some new big thick cables for earths and powers maybe we'll need that for the start motor I don't know but I thought I'd get them while I was there and then this it's the same holly that I've always used and that was last seen hanging underneath the bottom of the Austin ambassador but we might need it for this thing here because we sort of got the idea yesterday that the fuel pump doesn't really work or it's got a blockage somewhere but I thought forget all that we'll just put a can in the boot and attach holly to it so I'm going to get to work now, just sorting a couple of things out, getting these all done, and then we'll see what we uh, what we end up with, you know. We now have new earth cable hither, a new earth cable here. I've tried my best to tighten the earth cable up down there. We've got holly dripping away nicely there. Should put a. I've only just noticed that. Should put a jubilee clip on that. Bit of a pain. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that first. <laughs> Lovely. Um, and uh, hammer on top of the engine. Need to move that. It's blended in quite nicely because the engine's so rusty. Uh, what else have we done? I think that's it. Oh yeah, and we've got a new power cable going to the starter motor from the battery as well, just to give us a fighting chance. Now, let's see if she starts, and let's let's see if she idles. More importantly. Okay, let's turn this thing on to start or melt and a uh, bit, of, bit of juice down the thing. Just in case there's not anything there already now. Oh, so. Will it start off the key? Okay, so I've topped the water up, um, should have checked that first, and uh, 
then she sort of revved up a little bit and died. So I'm just going to have a little look over everything and see if anything's come off anywhere, you know. To stay idling, so I'm just gonna mess with a couple of little vacuum things on it. It sounds so good that engine, that there's no tapping, knocking, clicking, clanking. Pretty cool. She doesn't want to idle though. So uh, let's have a little bit of a look into that, you know. Just top the brake fluid up now. I don't think that's gonna do anything at all, but because it's an automatic, if we do try and get it to move, we've got to be able to get it to stop. Because obviously you can't just take it out. Well you could put it in neutral, can't you, and park, but it's not advisable when you're doing sort of 30 mile an hour to chuck it into park. Not that we're gonna be doing 30 mile an hour. Um, so yeah, struggling to get it to idle to be honest. I think the carb's a little bit overly engineered uh, all the vacuum lines and everything look to be good so it's probably something internal on the carb but she's running so what I'm planning on doing now is just move the tools out of the way and I want to see if she goes forwards and backwards <laughs> Super sketchy, but she moves. 
think the handbrake works, which is going to be very handy. 22 years sitting there, you know, doing nothing. Bored out of its mind, no doubt. And now she's going. I can hear the air coming out of that tyre. <laughs> so let's try and move it uh, quickly. doesn't want to idle. I can get it to idle by sticking a rag down its throat there. So I've tested with a spray bottle for air leaks and stuff and uh, there isn't any. So I think inside the car the idle circuit's gone. Um, but yeah, if I don't give it enough air, it idles down low. So that might be enough to sort of move us around, but I can't touch the throttle because then it sucks the rag in. But yeah, the only thing for it would be to take the carb off and sort of rebuild it. I haven't got a kit for it, I haven't got time to get a kit for it. And to be honest, don't need to spend the money either. The engine runs, it sounds pretty good. But yeah, idling nicely there. So what I'd really like to do now is try and get them idling enough that I can move it into there and if you'll notice as well there's a big gap there where a reliant scimitar used to be and that's because it's been sold it was collected yesterday it's gone so someone else could enjoy the scimitar uh i might go up there around there and stuff let's see let's try and get it to semi-idle first though i think that'd be nice wouldn't it
slightly nerve-wracking maiden voyage, but thank God for a really well-maintained handbrake, essentially. It's in there though, so we have a look. So as it turns out, the only reason it wouldn't back in there then, it was fine going down there, um, was I've run out of petrol. So I just had to like give it little sips down the carb there just to be able to back it in, but I have to get some more juice, I suppose. Um, but you know, she's moving under her own steam, like. Uh, right. Um, and you know, everything seems to be holding up in terms of heat, you know, we, you know, it's been running a lot now. Nothing's exploded, it doesn't seem to be dripping or anything, so that's pretty cool. But anyway, let's get her up in the air and let's see how good or potentially how bad this thing is underneath. It's quite possibly the rustiest car I've ever had in the workshop. Place bets now, are we going to find a jacking point? Is it going to snap in half when I lift it up in the air? Okay, what's under here? Oh, okay. Looks right at the back. Not too clever at the front. Oh my God, there's nothing left. She's officially in the air and hasn't snapped in two. Will the door open? Ah. Okay, can't be that bad then, can it? Oh dear, did I accidentally run over a horse earlier? Oh dear. Right then. Uh, there is a puddle of dripping stuff on the floor there. What's, what is it? Ah, that is brake fluid. So, um, that's probably one of the multitude of reasons why the brakes don't work. Oh, oh no, look at this. Right, okay, let's get the torch. Where should we start? I think the back's good because like that's the cleanest. So maybe we should start the good bit and go back to the, the front. So, yeah, nice. Okay, look, no massive holes. Yeah, great. Look at this. Look at these brake lines. Last time I saw brake lines like this, um, they were on the Titanic. So that's good. Yeah, lots of uh, lots of wet on that one. At least it's trying to do something though. That's kind of cool. So that must mean that the pedal part of the braking system is actually working and doing something. Look at this exhaust. <laughs> No wonder it was quite loud. Yeah, towing, towing eye there. Looks very strong. Yeah, it's not bad at the back boot floor. Really nice. What about up here? Again, look at that, dead clean. Real smart. It's so weird looking at how this is all laid out. This looks almost identical to the back of the um, Pontiac that I did. And you won't believe that it was a Pontiac Trans Am, proper nice car. And yet this Vauxhall Cavalier from the same year, the layout's almost identical. It's so interesting to see because they're very, very different cars, you know? Anyway, what's all this? Oh, oh no, oh no, we... it needs a haircut. Oh dear. God. There we go, that's nice, isn't it? We'll just pop that in this bin here. Ugh. Make a wig out of that or something. I think that is actually horse's hair, you know. I don't know what it is. If you know what that is, let me know in the comments, because I'd like to know. Handbrake, as we know, is, is working, surprisingly. Yeah, it's all right. It's okay, look at these things here that I'm using to hold the car up at the back at least. All oh, really nice, look at that there. You know, that is decent-ish. Sills and stuff, not bad. Not bad at all, that one's a bit crustier. 
Okay, what are the sills like? There's a cover on them, we can't see, but you know, down there, that's all right. So the floor at the back, that's all right, yeah. Fine, whatever. Down here, Ugh. what's happened there? Ah, it's all like under seal stuff, so it looks like there's probably a little bit of rust manifesting under there. Back end of the gearbox. This is where things start to get interesting. So these, this is your main sort of chassis strengthening bar. And then, you know, on both sides. Now over here, this is where I sort of mounted this to. And it's all right. And then you go sort of here onwards. And, well, let's get a screwdriver. Yeah, oops. Okay, I'm going to have to do the brushing up in here. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> Look at that's where all your, you know, all this stuff bolts onto. That's not very clever, is it? Look at that hole there. Do you remember the silver Mercedes we did? It's very reminiscent of that, isn't it? With a hole up there. Look, that goes all the way through. Wow. Calipers and stuff, hoses, yeah, all there. Gearbox a bit oily, it's just how we like it. What about this side? Pretty bad. Yeah. Shouldn't really be able to put my screwdriver through there, okay. Oh, look at these tucks. Look at that one. Oh yeah, oh yes, look at this here. <laughs> God, it's... That is a rusty car. Oh God, I hope there's nobody sitting there. <laughs> That's a rusty old motor. Well, this front bit here. Not too shabby that, okay. Engine wise, look, no leaks or anything for the radiator, that's pretty impressive. Oil filter's definitely never been changed, that was the bolt that was loose and I couldn't tighten. Yeah, okay, okay. There's the fuel pump. Ah, nice, okay. See if we can, might unscrew that, see if we can drain all the fuel out that I put in there, save myself about 40 quid. I mean, that's not too bad there, is it? But, yeah, those bits. It's concentrated very much in here, isn't it? You know, that's where the rust is on this car. It's not too bad everywhere else. I mean, bottom of the wings and stuff. It's all very solid, maybe a bit inside there, in mean, that thing. Yeah, okay. Well, there we have it then, the crusty Cavalier, the chronic Cavalier. Um, if you can think of any others, let me know. I only really bought this car just kind of for a lap. It wasn't very expensive. And I just wanted to see if after 22 years, I could get it running and get it moving under its own breath, which I did. And that's exciting. We've had a good look around it. And the rust, it's bad. You know, I don't think this car's gonna go on the road again. It'd need a huge amount of fabrication work. So it's definitely a parts car, this one, you know. They're not worth huge amounts of money. You can get much better examples out there anyway. But lots of really good spares could come off this. There's still loads of good stuff on the car. So I'll just stick it on eBay. Someone can do what they want with it. You could potentially take all the good stuff on it and send it around a banger track or something. Just do whatever you want to do, you know. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty gone. But I've enjoyed it. And I hope you've enjoyed watching as well. Uh, it's been a bit of fun, hasn't it, you know? 
And uh, if you have enjoyed watching, give me a little subscribe, a little like and stuff. And there's one more thing I want to show you before it does go. A lot of fire in this one's eyes, isn't there? Maybe she will live on again somewhere. But you know, she could donate some of her bits and make others live on. I don't know. Dead cool. Um, and again, thanks very much for watching. Vauxhall Cavalier, the fast one. Uh, slight corrosion to underside. Um, runs like a Swiss watch. Um, test driven. Perfect. Collection only in the dark preferred.